Let me sort of zoom all the way out to our perspective on, on, on the future. We've established uh, a vision for the company uh, where we believe in a future of uh, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. And that's sort of our perspective on where the world wants to go or where we can help shape the world to get to. And so we've laid out this very clear and very ambitious perspective. We, we believe that a lot of the emerging technologies are big enablers to realize that vision. So think about autonomous vehicles, that'll have a huge positive impact on, uh, on crashes and, and accidents. It'll have a huge positive impact on the cost of transportation and accessibility of transportation and ultimately on managing congestion. We think all autonomous cars will be electric cars and that'll get to the emissions point. So, so there's a whole portfolio of technology that we think can, can come into place to enable this future vision uh, that we've laid out. So we're, you know, by having that very clear perspective, it gives us a sort of a North Star, if you like, on, on what we're aiming at and, and, and the technologies that we think we need to invest in. We've been very clear about this, and I'll say it again. Safety will be the gating factor for us to make the decision to deploy. So we won't deploy until we believe the technology is safe um, and until we're completely ready. You know, we have a, a timeline that we've laid out on when we expect that could occur, but ultimately safety will be the gating uh, factor for our decision um, to deploy. You referenced what's been in the news in terms of uh, a couple of these, uh, these, these incidents, a couple of tragic incidents. And, um, you know, and, and those are significant, but what hasn't been in the news is the, you know, 100 people every day that are losing their lives in regular cars on the roads. And, you know, this year it will be something approaching 40,000 people in the United States that lose their lives on our roads. It'll be 1.2 million people globally. And 95% of those accidents per NHTSA are caused by human error. And so if we can make a profound and significant positive impact on that with this technology, then that's something we feel obligated to, uh, you know, to get to that point where we can do that. Automatic emergency braking um, and more sophisticated vision systems to avoid collisions. Um, are you going to speed up deployment of those types of technologies, not just in the United States, but in China and other markets where you operate? Uh, to go after the numbers that you're talking about in terms of fatalities? Yeah, absolutely. I, we have two relatively separate development paths. So the, the level four or five fully autonomous technology development path. Um, and then we have the, the more of a continuum of, of technologies that we're deploying you know, along the lines of what you were describing and, and you know, including Super Cruise, which is the first true hands-free driving technology. Um, uh, that's deployed uh, on the roads today. And so we will continue on both of those paths uh, in parallel, so adding more and more safety content to vehicles. And if you, again, if you sort of step all the way back and, and go back to sort of the 1960s timeframe, and you go from the 1960s to today, the fatality rate per 100 million miles traveled has decreased by 80%. So you know it's gone gone down by eighty percent, and so and it's been a very steady and uh, and deliberate um, you know, reduction, and that's a that's been a huge achievement, and that's been enabled by vehicle engineering, it's been enabled by technology, it's been enabled by uh, working with uh, you know with governments and regulation and all of those things, and so we absolutely are committed to continuing uh, on that path you know, with, by adding additional feature content and technology to the cars, while at the same time working on this somewhat separate stream of getting to the point of full autonomy, which can make another huge step change. And what your position is on a lot of these uh, regulatory things, particularly emissions and fuel economy, but as well, you know, safety and other things. So very big picture, if you go back to the zero crashes, zero congestion, zero emissions, you know, we. We believe ultimately in a zero emissions future and an all electric future. You know, and there's you know we need to get from here to there, but it's you know that's a that's a perspective that our company has. Um, we also believe that one of the important uh, things that can happen on the path from here to there is to get to one national standard of regulation because that will allow us uh, to 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 invest once to solve you know for one set of regulation. Um, and to frankly make more improvement and better improvements on the journey from here to a zero emission future. And so that 
that getting to an aligned single national standard we think is is very important and a big enabler for you know getting everybody where where they want to go. You know, General Motors is a global company. You have to sell vehicles around the world. Um, even if the U.S. pulls back on some of its regulatory pressures, you want to uh, invest so that you can meet the regulations in other places, whether it's California or China or wherever. So you're sort of destined to have to keep going anyways on this path toward um, more efficient vehicles, even if the U.S. says, no, nah, you don't have to rush so hard. Well, I think it's, and it's more than just regulation. It's what are our customers expecting of us, right? What is, what is society expecting of us as, as a company? And, and that's why we felt this is sort of zero, zero, zero view of the world is an important thing to lay out because it gives a perspective on, on where, where we think the world should be going ultimately. Um, and then the question becomes, as I mentioned, how do we, you know, what's, what's the most effective way to get from here to there? Um, you know, having more consistency and regulation is always better. We're in a in a heavy investment long cycle business, and having not just you know uh, more consistent regulations, but a more stable regulatory environment is really important. If the rules keep changing along the way, and we're trying to make you know multi multi year investments, that's a really difficult thing to manage. So we'd rather get to a point where there's there's one set of rules, there's stability in those rules, and then we can you know plan all of our technology investment and roll out according to that. You know, when we invest in a new architecture for something, we expect that now to run for some, anywhere between 12 and 15 years. 12 and 15. 12, yeah. Um, and the, all of the investments we've been making uh, on the vehicles launch recently and, uh, and the ones that will launch in the next couple of years have been made where the, the architectures of those cars have been engineered with a view to carrying us that far into the future from a regulatory point of view. And you've seen, I think, the the huge amount of mass that we've taken out, for example, out of all of these vehicles, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and that sets us up to, you know, to continue on that whole glide path. Um, so we want to make sure there's the right level of stability and predictability where there's trade or regulation so that when we make these big investments for the long term, we know that we can utilize them as far as we, as we believe we need to.